This catapult-like system on the moon might bring us limitless energy. It's a launch system concept that was recently proposed by the Chinese scientists. It would work like a hammer throw, spinning a launch arm that flings objects. This arm is supposed to be about 165 feet long. It will accelerate until it reaches the moon's escape velocity, and then whoosh, the capsule is sent into space. This crazy idea will cost around $18 billion. Ooh, pricey. But trust me, it's totally going to be worth it. The system would be powered by solar panels and nuclear energy. It could also recover more than 70% of the energy used after each launch. The moon has a very weak gravity. There's also barely any atmosphere, so the air doesn't weigh you down. This makes it so much easier to launch stuff there. But why do we even need this? The main purpose is to transport helium-3. It's a really cool isotope of helium, and one of the most insane things about it is that it could become fuel for nuclear fission. This is the same process that happens in stars, including our sun. If we manage to recreate nuclear fusion here, on Earth, we can make it a clean and basically limitless source of energy for power plants. But helium-3 is super rare on Earth. We can sometimes find it in volcanic rock formations on the ocean floor. That's because it's a product of another rare element called tritium, the element we usually make in nuclear reactors and put in cool stuff like glow-in-the-dark paint. But the catch of tritium is that it takes forever to decay and turn into helium-3. Now, there's a bunch of helium-3 on the moon, around 1 million tons. Just 20 tons of helium-3 could meet China's yearly electricity needs. In fact, lunar soil has enough helium-3 to power the entire world for over a thousand years. But why is there so much of helium-3 on the moon and barely none on our planet? Well, that's because helium-3 comes from the sun and travels in solar winds. Solar winds are like streams of dangerous particles. They're super radioactive. Our planet's thick atmosphere and magnetic fields serve as a shield for us. They almost fully protect us from those particles. But unfortunately, they also prevent the good stuff like helium-3 from getting here. The moon's atmospheric shields are super thin though, so it's under a constant shower of solar winds. So helium-3 accumulated there over billions of years, and now it's just scattered around there. But mining it and bringing back to Earth is no easy feat. It's super expensive. Just think about it. Rockets need tons of fuel to break free from gravity. Every single bolt and screw on the spacecraft must be engineered to survive extreme conditions, like radiation. Not to mention, you need a team of rocket scientists, literally working around the clock to make sure nothing goes wrong. You can't call a repair guy if something breaks on the moon. So generally, it costs about a half a million dollars to send one pound of payload to our satellite. That's based on estimates from NASA. To get some idea, let's calculate how much it would cost to send an apple to the moon. A typical apple weighs about 0.4 pounds, so that funny mission would be at least $200,000. Now for comparison, the Chinese launch system weighs around 80 tons. Another problem is that the lunar surface is pretty harsh on the equipment, like the freakish lunar dust, for example. You might recall this small thing that happened in the 60s called the moon landings. But when the Apollo astronauts came back from the moon, they found something weird was happening to them. Their throats were sore and their eyes watered. Luckily, it wasn't some scary moon sickness. Turns out, there's a lot of lunar dust clinging to their spacesuits. This dust seems harmless, but it's made up of sharp and abrasive particles, much smaller than a human hair, yet sharp like glass. It contains silicate, a thing that can cause severe lung problems on Earth and is a common issue for miners. So it caused a lunar hay fever. At least that's how NASA astronaut Harrison Schmidt called it. All 12 astronauts who walked on the moon were then sneezing and experiencing nasal congestion. Sometimes it took days to fade away. The dust even got inside their spacecraft, smelling like burnt gunpowder. This nasty stuff can be harmful to both humans and equipment. It managed to damage spacesuit boots and even ruin the seals on the containers used to bring back samples during the Apollo missions. As we mentioned, they're glass-sharp and jagged, 
So they start scratching, grinding, and wearing down any surfaces they come in contact with. They don't care if it's metal, glass, or humans. And since there's so much dust, this causes equipment to malfunction and fail quite quickly. And that's just one of the possible hurdles with lunar missions. So scientists really need to come up with some weird ideas to get that precious helium-3. The Chinese Scientist Project looks like a weird sci-fi invention, but it's a cost-effective way to transport materials back to us. It could throw stuff to Earth twice a day, and it would be 90% cheaper than current methods. Since it only needs electricity and no fuel, the system would be small and easy to set up. Besides the beloved Helium-3, this catapult would also help advance technologies in space mining and heavy launch vehicles. No lunar dust scares this thing. It should last for at least 20 years. It would need to be transported to the moon using China's super heavy lift rocket. But the idea is far from new. There was a novel called The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Robert A. Heinlein. In the story, there's a lunar colony that uses an electromagnetic catapult to send weed and water ice back to Earth. It gets quite wild when the colonists, known as loonies, eventually take control of this catapult. They threaten to launch rocks at Earth unless their colony is recognized as an independent world. Sounds kind of funny, but a large rock, if thrown at us from the moon, could wipe out a city. The damage would be like from a meteorite strike, with fires, houses destroyed, and worse. But scientists have been talking about this catapult idea for a while. For decades, they were trying to find a way to use electromagnetic systems to send resources from the moon to Earth. There are also some challenges. For example, scientists forgot to mention how exactly helium-3 would be extracted from the lunar soil. Installing this launch system on the moon's rugged surface would be difficult as well. Also, they would need to make sure that the system remains stable at high speeds and that it could withstand the moon's extreme temperature changes, cosmic rays, and intense solar radiation. So it would take some time to develop. China hopes to have the key components of the system ready by 2030. The full-scale operations might start by 2045. China has tons of plans for the moon. For example, they want to build a research station at its south pole by 2035. But China's not the only one in this space race. Considering that NASA plans to send humans on Mars by that time, oh boy, the 2030s will be a crazy decade for space exploration. There's also an American startup that's part of the lunar economy. Oh, the ones that plan to land astronauts on the moon have people actually living on our satellite in a decade or two. One of the goals of this colony is to boost economic growth and create new jobs. Most of them will likely involve some mining activities. And if there'd be two space colonies, well, they'll have to figure something out. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.